Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. It is Wednesday, the 26th of July, 2017. We're racing through the year. The name of this video is We the People, and it is We the People for a reason. Tonight, we're going to touch on all of the reasons why the future is bright for Trinidad and Tobago because of We the People. This is one of those rare videos where everything is hope and promise. Spread the word. Let them know the love session starts now. Let me tell you a story of their pain and their joy. All of we, one people under one flag. Elections night. When they call elections and the PP is victorious, this will be blasted from speakers in 41 constituencies. One people under one flag. Victory for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. This is what we call. On the pages, on the threads, on your wall, call them out. Yeah. 
We the people. We the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Today I got into a conversation with a chap and it, well, the whole day today was remarkably very, it was exposing me to, I don't want to use the word race, but ethnic differences and how much ethnic differences divide us on a daily basis. The good people of 91.9 invited me to be on the radio from 11 to about half past 12 today. And I, and I was told as I walked into the studio that, well, the ground and some diehards are the people who listen to this show. And that when we do, and they asked if I would take phone calls, I say yes, take, that's why I go on the radio. They say they have some politicians who will dare not take phone calls. I say, why? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I think I could stand in my truth. I think I could stand in my truth. I can't stand in your lies. I can't stand in the PNM lies. I can't stand in the UNC lies. I don't take them on. I don't fight them on their lies. I stand in my truth. And I have found that over time, when you courageously stand in your truth, people will enter meet you there. This is not me patting myself on my back. Going into a situation where I'm in a studio and there are three people shooting questions at me. It started off where it felt like hostile territory. It ended where I didn't want to leave that studio. And, and the show dug deep. They make a joke. They say as a half a 1%. And I laugh, I post it on Facebook. But they were speaking from their truth. They were speaking from their reality. I don't, I am not the kind of person that somebody tell me, that somebody call in and say, you carry on for election, they will call you a white boy. I say, I'm not a white boy. I'm a kind of caramel latte, like brown, strong and sweet. And, but even that caller was speaking from the truth that that caller understood that certain people did certain things and certain people were allowed certain things. So where I come out from? Indeed. But, I don't think like that. And I, and, I, and I credit growing up on O'Connor Street in Woodbrook. My best friends growing up were like a United Nations. And I call their names now. Colin Young. I'm talking about from very tiny, small. Colin Young. Leonard Edgel. Bruce Pouchette, Dave Kaulesa, Chinese, white, red, Indian, and half Syrian me. So none of us understood that there was something like race. We didn't know about that then. Woodbrook wasn't like that. O'Connor Street wasn't like that. And, and, and that's how I grew up. I grew up in a Trinidad and Tobago where all of we is one family. We had to move and we went to live. When I went into St. Mary's College, we, went, we, we moved to West Morant. And both of those things were a culture shock. And in both situations, I found out that not everybody lived like that. And I had to learn to deal with that. But I want to tell you something. I have never, ever forgotten the experience. I will never forget the experience. I'm actually writing a book called O'Connor Street. I've been working on it for about 10 years now. But I will never forget growing up inside all of these families' homes because in Woodbrook, in O'Connor Street, at any given time, all of us or whoever was together would have been in one of our houses and there were differences. But we just chalk that up to people in the front. We never realized because I mean all of us climbed Leonard Edgel tree and pick all these abaca and went outside this come out on the corner of Lewis Street is a casino now and sell Zabuka to make money to have our first party so we could buy two cases of Cokes. Eleven years old, we had a party. And I'm just sharing these things because 
I I went through that today and 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 that interview on that station reaffirmed to me Trinidadians are not racist people. We will make all the bad skylark we want. We will make all the joke. But Trinidadians are fundamentally and everybody, every creed and race. You all know Maria's Bakery is one of my favorite places. I go there generally all the time. I went into Maria's Bakery this morning to get a cup of hot chocolate to, to go to the same studio. An elderly Syrian gentleman stopped me to tell me, you're following what's going on in Toko and who buying land and what they're doing. And the names he calling is some other corrupt Syrians too. And it just goes to show and I say that all of these one people and this nonsense that there, there are people eh, as watch certain people who call themselves activists and all they're doing is trying to sow discord among the brethren. Because you see, as long as there is discord among the brethren, we will not see and pay attention to what the rest of them doing. They want that. Because they on top there, they're not racist either. You know? Them is a bandit clan. Once you Tiffin, Tiffin have no color, Tiffin have no religion, you know. Tiffin is money. But the nonsense at the bottom to have us fight each other over race. And the Syrian guy, you know, I know him. Elderly guy, he stopped me. He give me some info. I said, you know, you send me them facts. He said, boy, right now all I have is here. say, but I'll pin it down for you. Because nobody in this country is as stereotyped as people want, as certain people want you to believe. Nobody is like that. There is no race that is different in Trinidad and Tobago. In, you know what I, I tell people all the time? Go in the lowest class community to the richest class community. Let them pull up the drive, the car in the yard, and let the dog get away. And hear how a Trinidadian does run down the dog. Go back inside. All the way. No matter where our ancestors from whence they came. And, and, and today on that show, they were expecting me. When they say, you sure you're taking calls? You sure? They was expecting, and I get eviscerated. I say into the microphone, I say, my fingers and my toes crossed. We're going in. The majority of the people called were in support. The majority of the people called. In fact, the few who might have been negative, they weren't directly negative. They were cautioning me about others who might be negative. The, the, nobody cutting off, nobody. It live and it open like my phone here at night. Unless it's caller blocked, I'm not taking those calls. But any call that come, I answer in the phone. And I'm answering it not knowing who's on the phone and I'm open, I'm open to that because all of the battle and all of the foolishness that have gone on in this country on the ground level has benefited nobody. It's benefited us nothing. It's robbed us of the unity that would have prevented political parasites, quacks and hacks from reducing this country to the, to the economic rubble it is now. We will rebuild it, you know. I have faith in my people. I have absolute faith in my people. We will rebuild and we will go higher and we will do better. Watch and see. Watch and see. Because we've never had our money, you know. We've never had it. We've never actually had it. So if we get 20% of what we never had is more than what we actually had. And I have absolute faith in my people to rebuild a better Trinidad and Tobago. Watch and see. A people with hope and opportunity set on fire with a vision is a path to greatness. Get out of the way. You know. Get out of the way. You want to see that red, white, and black fly outside people's house? Give them the belief that that red, white, and black love them too. We don't know if we belong. Trinidadians don't know. We are comfortable in Trinidad and Tobago. We are more Trini outside of Trinidad and Tobago. When we hear we're not sure. Everybody don't know how to relate to everybody. I tell you something. If you're born here, and your navel string bury here, this is your country. And nobody, nobody, nobody have a right to tell you otherwise. I left that show today. 
full of hope. I don't want to live full of pure, pure hope. And I wanted to come and say tonight, red, white, black, and green, and every shade and hue and color in between, we, the people. If the Progressive Empowerment Party does one thing, if we never win an election, if we never win a seat, but we unite the nation, educate and empower the people and make them, make them stand in their power, stand in their truth, yes, I come from so-and-so, my family come from so-and-so, but I is a trinity. Say it with pride. You don't have to be black to be a trinity. You don't have to be white to be a trinity. You don't have to be brown to be a trinity. You don't have to be, you don't have to be Syrian, African, and we Trinidadians and Tobagonians. That is who we are. Claim it. Claim it with pride. Get that red, white, and black and fly it. Claim it with pride. And who vexed laws? All of them who want to sow discord among the brethren. We will put together a bank account. Collect money and buy tickets for them. Where you want to go, brother? Where you want to go, sister? You see, when people share on my wall, and people could tell you this, eh? every now and then there's encounter somebody who posts in some overtly racist from either the camps to sow discord. And people just come and say, Philip, you see this? I say, oh, share that on my wall. I ain't giving them any exposure. I ain't giving them any power. I ain't giving them any attention. Not me. And at least he's not this nigga. I am not giving them any power, any exposure, any attention. That's what they're doing it for. That's what they're doing it for. The people who are trying to sow discord among the brethren, miss we with that. Tell them. Tell them. You see, when people come to me, I will never forget a government minister in UEFET a couple years ago. Telling me, but Philip, how you jamming we? You is one of we. And I've, I've never felt so insulted. I am not one of you. I have never been one of you. I am not corrupt. I am not an egotistical bastard who just in this for money, or for position, or for office, or for people to call my name. Half my life people calling me Rocky. Rocky Garcia name outside him more than mine. I grew up with an next fellow named Jared Ali. Me, Rocky, and Jared, we grew up together. All of us used to look exactly like each other. Mistake, I see Jared the other day. He said, Maria's telling people who was around us how we used to get each other in trouble. We grew up together. That Trinidad and Tobago, that's the Trinidad and Tobago we must want to leave for our generations to come. We, that was the thing that we had. We used to say it all the time. No matter what going on, you gotta go and license an office. You're fixed. But at two hours are in this line. But the people around you is your friend. You make friends. You may never see them again. You ain't take nobody number. You ain't adding them as friends as Facebook. But you're left feeling a camaraderie. Even the cashier. When you're reaching from the cashier, when I walk in a bank, all the noise I make, when I walk in a bank, all the tellers is my friends, you know. Security guards is my friends, waiters, waitresses, barmen. I love this concept. Greet the CEO and the janitor with the same favor and respect. I love that. I live that. And I don't listen. I have haters. I have haters. I know I have haters. People who will never like me. And that's cool. I had to say on the radio today, they crucify Christ. They assassinate Gandhi and Martin Luther King. Three of the biggest leaders in history. If them had haters, who is me? In fact, I might have feel I ain't doing something right if nobody didn't dislike what I was saying. The truth of the matter is everything that we can I tell, I said today on the radio, we put the peep back in people. They tell me that will fail. Don't use that as a marketing slogan. But I was making a joke. But that's what the PEP is. When you come to a PEP meeting and you look around, you realize this is what the framers meant. This is what the visionaries behind Trinidad and Tobago. I think this is what God meant. This country is so blessed. People say God is a Trinity as a punchline to a joke. But I really believe this country has the best weather, the most fertile land, located in the best place on the planet that you could be located. Do you all know that the first 
line of latitude recorded on planet Earth runs through Trinidad and Tobago. And before there was GPS, they used to have to check everything in the world in relation to Trinidad and Tobago. That is why we have an observatory street in Port of Spain. This tiny little country, so important to everything, so blessed, so perfectly positioned, so beautiful, our people... When you see, it's not, it's not for Facebook to tell us that our women are the most beautiful in the world. Facebook can't tell me that. I hear that the ministries of culture sell our women as prostitutes and use them to sell some kind of sex tourism for China. I hate that. We will get into government and we will fix that. Culture doesn't have to be that. People need to be free. But don't sell our women as hoes. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. But I don't need to read anybody 10 best countries in the world for the most beautiful woman. Listen, I choose to live here. Not only do I choose to live here, I choose to fight for her. The members of the Progressive Empowerment Party choose to fight for her. We are not abandoning Trinidad and Tobago. We are not leaving it to the bandit clan. We refuse to accept that this is our country. We will not. We are unreasonable. The Progressive Empowerment Party is an unreasonable bunch of people. Reasonable people want to accept things just as they are. Unreasonable people change the world. We have a vision of Trinidad and Tobago and everybody who calls, everybody who talks, even my, you know what I love? I love that even my detractors and my haters say, a man just sent me a text today. He said, talk to a man today. And he say, he don't like you at all. But everything you say is fact. And everything you say is true. A bank manager told one of our senior members that your PEP housing plan will save Trinidad and Tobago. Just that plan. Will put everybody to work. Will give people hope and opportunity. Will rebuild the middle class. And Trinidad and Tobago will thrive and prosper. Just that plan. He said the only economic diversification you all do is to stay true to that zero deposit, zero interest, 30 years for first time homeowners. That will revolutionize your country. That will plant people's feet in the soil and they will have reason to stand firm as patriots and defend home, neighborhood, community, country. We know the average person, the average citizen feels unrepresented and when they feel unrepresented they feel like this country not for them people don't walk in the general hospital bold people just walk in the general hospital in fair people walk in police stations in fair people walk in edu school children go to school in fair that is why when they get some size and they get some strength they become violent because that's the response as it push back in your space that's all animals are like that we raising our children like animal our education system forcing our children to an animal response we do not walk into any office of state and feel i belong here we allow things to be done in our name because we don't know who to turn to. Nobody in Trinidad Tobago likes the way this country is run. Nobody. Nobody likes it. PNM supporters don't like how the country is run when PNM in power. UNC supporters don't like how the country is run when UNC is in power. But UNC supporters can't speak out when UNC in power for risk, for fear that they will be called PNM. And PNM can't speak out when PNM in power because PNM people will call them UNC. So the foolishness isolates them in fear. And along comes this orange party that says, hey now, it's not working. And we orange. So red and yellow is orange. Both sides feel like about one foot in this party. And there is a mass of people. I, you should see my WhatsApp or my Facebook message. When I come home on an evening, hundreds of messages. I had to go through all. People will see the little tick that I read it. And if that's all you see and you don't get a word from me, trust me, just the tick means I've read it. But I can't answer you because I'm trying to keep up with the hundreds of messages. And those messages are people that call in or write in to say, you know what? 
You have our complete and full support. But we are afraid of losing our house. We are afraid of losing our job. We are afraid of violence in our community and of victimization. But I want to tell Trinidad Tobago this, you know. The Orange Revolution, the government and the opposition, they know. They know. They're trembling. That is why when I see Dane Wilson put out this litany of things about me, all the bad things in the world he could say about me. It hurt. And I want to answer. It attacked family members. It attacked Jericho Project. I want to answer. Lawyers tell me, slow your roll. No problem. And over time, it became less important to answer him because the public dismissed him. And then I realized that they were struggling to get people to share it as scandal. Look back and now. Look, Philip, he's an old thief. Look. Look, he's an old thief and a con man and he failed everything in school. Look, look at here. Share it. And the people was ignoring it. One morning I wake up and I look in the news feed and I saw it sponsored. That meant somebody was giving Dane Wilson money to pay Facebook to share it in the news feed. Because it wasn't being shared organically. And I had to laugh. Brandon Khan and Sophie White and the handful of people that believed the nonsense and shared it. And I want to ask Brandon and Sophia, say, where you all believe these things of me? One good day. And I'm not holding no grudges. Listen, God is my witness. I will even forgive Dane Wilson and Corn Beef Man. Corn Beef Man, confused. Confused. So when all of you Feel with love in your heart to send me. You see this boy, Phil? You see what they're saying about you? You want to answer? No. No, I don't. Because I understand what I and this party represent. And Trinidad and Tobago has already changed. They said that on the radio to me today. The host said people are standing up. Nothing passing for talk. And Keith Rowley found out in point 14. And Kamala and them have to be paying people to come to the Monday night forum. Let a whole a normal meeting, like Pep does whole a normal meeting. See how much people go. They're not interested. Watch the live videos number. 112. 76. You see Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition and the country don't want to hear you. And you watching us doing a hundred thousand views in a week? I tell you some secrets about social media. You could manipulate numbers of views. You know what you can't manipulate? The conversation that happens in the thread. Every night at the end of this video, I make myself a cup of tea and come back and sit down and rewatch the video to read the whole thread. Because I want to see what everybody is saying about what I am saying. And I can't keep up while I'm talking and you're talking. I can't keep up and see some. But I want to come back and read every single comment. And then they have nights. By the time the video done, 2,500 comments. That is interaction. When you see your videos have interaction and the public engaged, they're not just showing up to click like, but they're there and they're involved and they're engaged and they're engaging each other and they're talking issues and they're standing up to or with you on programs, plans, policies, and ideas, you know you're getting somewhere. And I know that... They spend money on communications people. And I know the communications people have to be telling them that Orange Revolution is growing. Tonight's video was almost called the coming storm. Winter is coming. The Orange Revolution, we are barely almost seven months old. And this little party with no budget, you're not on TV. The media is hiding us. This morning I had to laugh. I shared it and then I deleted because Gibbs LeFleur shared something and I watched it and I couldn't believe. With all the murder, mayhem, scandal, bacchanal going on in this country, the Express chose to run as their headlines the Game of Thrones, the story about Sansa in the Game of Thrones. And I had to wonder, how do they, how did the editor feel to put out that as a newspaper? To copy and paste the Washington Post putting out a story about Game of Thrones. You copy, I call you the copy and paste media and you prove it today. You copy and paste Washington Post. 
the media that belongs to those parties hiding the Progressive Empowerment Party from the people. We are calling a press conference next week. People are asking me, Phil, put out your people. Let them see who in the party. Where are you putting them out? You're not going to see them on CNC3. CNC3 and TV6 will come and do interview and you never see it run. Christmas Day, this Christmas Day and every Christmas Day for the past 10 years, the Jericho Project fed the homeless in Port of Spain. Where that gangrene man, we know him. We know him. The Jericho Project feeds Christmas lunch and other times during the year, every Christmas Day, and Otto Carrington, and Otto watches this video because I see when he signed in. Otto Carrington came to me Christmas Day while we were feeding the homeless and the whole Jericho Project there and said, Phil, you mind if we do an interview? I said, Otto, you know they're running that. He said, God, let me try now. We did an interview. And Melissa and the rest of the members of Jericho Project took pictures of Otto with Otto, selfies with Otto, Otto interviewing me. And it never ran. It never ran. Because the power structure needs to silence us. Silence us in the court, silence us in the media, threaten our lives, defame our names. And that's why I keep in my people back a little bit and, and I'm showing them eh? they seeing my members Ali G, Lima, Felicia Delwood David Ramjohn they seeing Tony the constant viciousness of the attacks from the other two sides and they seeing how I deal with it they seeing how I stand and they getting some pointers and some tips because in our meeting last week, they said, they're ready. Let's go. Launch out. I had to tell them, it is one thing to watch them assassinate my character. It's something else entirely to wake up in the morning and read in the news feed. Some things are being said about you that are untrue and people are taking it as if it is. People take it as if it is. And you have to face your family. You have to face your children. This is what they've said about you. You're a crook, you're a con man, you're a molester, you beat your wife, you horn your husband, all that. And you had to sit there, be strong. Then they have calls, check in your life. You say, boy, Phil, I ain't signed on for this. You have people you do business with calling you and saying, I don't know how to tell you, but we had to stop doing business with you because we gain pressure. So this is why I'm holding back my people. The Progressive Empowerment Party is a big organization now. We're international now, and that's not boasted. Our office, the one, our, our number one agenda item right now is get funds and get a bigger office. We cannot hold the amount of people that comes to meetings now. And all of those people are ready to stand up. We will come out. And I have said, now we're building the 41 executives. And when we build the 41 executives and we have 41 chairmen and we have our executive and our steering committee and our advisory council and our national council, we could say, okay, we will come out with our meeting, 500 strong. And this is not 500 maxi taxi riders. These are people all with a role and a function in the Progressive Empowerment Party that is building the future for you, me, and our children. I tell them on the radio today, I never wanted political office. I still don't. I do not want to waste the last best years of my life sitting down in a parliament arguing nonsense with Carl Mimbert and Rudal Munila and the rest of those clowns. I don't want that. I do not want that for me. There is no amount of blue lights. You could put green lights on the car. It doesn't work for me. I drive on the San Navarro and I'm happy with that. I pull up in meetings with people with Range Rovers and the latest Mercedes Benz, Gary Griffith Mercedes Benz, look like a spaceship. I cool with my van. I normal. I happy. And I don't want more. I don't need more. If I never have to wear another tie in life, Again, I'll be happy. Ecstatic. I want to go and see the world. I've worked hard. There is nothing government has. Nothing. Nothing government has that I want. No position. 
You talking about prime minister? You could call me ultra prime minister. It doesn't excite me. I have zero interest in it. The members could tell you the easiest thing for Philip Alexander to do is give power away. I founded the Jericho Project. I have no claim to it. As Tara and Melissa and Jamie and the rest of the girls and the rest of the team, Colin, give it away. We've done it. We do it. We work. When they call me and I could help, I dare with them helping. I ain't no boss in the Progressive Empowerment Party. They don't even know what's my position. I'm not on the executive. I work and I help and I do this. And they own it. We've created a non-profit organization to be the company because you can't register a political party as a legal organization in Trinidad. And there are three directors and not one of those positions is me. I want no claim to nothing. So why are you doing it? Why are you doing this? Because I can. Because I can. Because I, Philip Edward Alexander, have the right skill set to tear the entire power structure down. Because I can. Marcus Aurelius, you ever heard that name? Rescued Rome. And when Rome was free, walked away. The Senate said, Rome is at your feet. That Rome is not mine. Those are my heroes. Those are my heroes. I'm not corned beef man. I don't want land from the state. I don't want a 40 acres. Gary Griffith could tell you. I worked with Gary for 14 months. And never asked for anything. Not help with nothing. I went to get my firearm user's license without discussing it with the Minister of National Security. And I was his... I was just the closest person to him at times. And I asked him for nothing. I had access to Kamala and Monilal. Nothing. They could never tell you that they gave me a shortcut, a end, a contract, nothing. My son and his best friend, four years ago, want to be contractors. They hear about Julia Sami and Calco and SIS and they're thinking Rolex and Rolls Royce. And my son and his best friend Kaifa went and get a WASA contract. For barely a million dollars. Lost money on this stupid project. And I told them, you don't want to get into that. This is not business. This is not real business. But they wanted to try corn beef mouth man and them saying, I, my son get millions of dollars in Wasa in government contracts. And even if that were true, he's a citizen of the Republic. It is not true. But he's a citizen of the Republic. He and his best friend and their company, they were entitled to pitch and they went through all the channels because I had no public office. So whether they got it or not, they got it through dealing with the system and they are citizens of the republic so why they not why not normal why 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 is it why is that an issue but they need thing to talk about i hear philip related to the chairman of the integrity commission no i'm not no i'm not he's related to somebody i'm related to but what is what is how is that an issue how are those points to discuss and i'm bringing all of this up and i'm discussing all of this because I want you to understand. I want less, not more. I literally, my whole dream was to go and backpack across the world. I want to go and see the ancient cities. I want to go. I wanted to build a home for my family and that they're safe so I know I could go and I come back somewhere and have a country to come back to. All of this I do in here. All of this is I want a nation because I will grow old. I know that a time will come when I will be in form and I will be aged and I will have to lay my head down and trust systems and people and hope. I don't want to live in hope. I want to live in the promise that this is a nation where everybody's safe to live and nobody interfering with nobody. I want to go back. I want Trinidad to come back to a place where wrought iron don't sell. Wrought iron mustn't sell in Trinidad to make or we fail. Nobody must take it off your window. It is a sign of a failure. If you have to put wrought iron on your houses, when St. Finbar's Church opposite Goodwood Gardens put electric fence, the nation had already failed. 
that was failed. The church needed to protect itself from its people. When your, when your church is in danger, look at man sit down in a church and wait for them to do the collections and rob the church. Then they come and rob this next priest. Nearly kidnap him. What, what else you needed to know? When people reached and did not care in, the nation failed. Kid Rowley failed. Patrick Manning failed. Kamala failed. Bastio Pande failed. They failed. If this is the legacy that they left behind, no matter what they build or what they give you, they could have put a mosque on and temple and church in every corner. It doesn't help if the nation is failing. And that's what we need to talk about. But we're not going to talk about it if they allow, if they, if because of their actions, the score is sown among the brethren. And black people and Indian people can't talk. You can't talk. Because if you talk, they want us to race as race bait you one time. You're only saying that because Kamala is not in power. I, I, you know how many times people just come on one of my threads and say, What I was doing when Kamala was in power? And I used to say, Google my name. But now I Google my name for them. So I show them Philip and Fuad Khan crossing swords over the ambulances and Philip and Anil Roberts crossing swords over room 202, room 201 and, and Philip telling Kamala she have to fire Anil over life sport and Philip telling Jerry Hadid and Vasan Bharat you can't be using state money to put up Kamala pictures on billboards and she was the Prime Minister. Every Monday morning Gary Griffith used to call me and say, what do you do now boy? Do you to pressure him in the cabinet to fire me? And he knew that. Ask Gary. Ask Gary. And that's why I still stand by that boy. Because I know he have a good heart. Because Gary stood by me then. Because he understood that we didn't get into politics to feather we nest. He didn't get into politics to like up himself. I'm not like my partner from Goodwood Park. Who ego so tiny that he need more and more and more so his wife could post pictures of him on Facebook and say look real man and she's sleeping with all the trainers in the gym but she posting pictures of him saying look real man I ain't want that life partner shoot me in my head first cancel and rebuke that don't take that as a permission I don't want them life I don't want none of that. I love that we have this conversation. I love that people feel that they can reach out to me and talk to me. I started this conversation to read something to you. Somebody sent me today, unaffected but outraged. I loved it. I shared it. I said change will come when we all begin to think like this. Unaffected but outraged. And it leads me to this guy. Because he's unaffected. But he's not outraged. And I wrote this today. So those who didn't get to read it, I'm sharing it now. He's an intelligent guy, born to extremely well-off people. He has known nothing but good fortune from as long as he can remember, I am sure. Today he shook my hand at a chance encounter at a dry cleaners, looked into my eyes and asked if I thought it was worth it. If I really believed that I had a chance, so entrenched was the brokenness, the racist divide, the natural order of things among the two sides of the aisle. He did not want to use the word race when speaking of those people, him the offspring of neither side, but in his capacity and business he rattled off a list of the names of the well-connected and familiar the high order of both sides to whom and with whom he was well connected and familiar. Him stating that I had no idea the extent to the theft of one side. Inferring after that that he knew that both were the same. Yet unwilling to budge from his belief that it was how it was because people could not change. So sure and certain he was. This pompous jackass. This child of good fortune. I wanted to tell him there... I wanted to tell him there was a time that people could have been legally bought and sold. That women had less rights than farm animals. That average men had no power, no right to own land, no vote. That many of these inconsistencies all at some time came to the death that was the real natural order of things. But looking into his eyes, I felt for all his education and exposure, it would have been akin to spitting into the wind. He hinted at things said of me, 
of the enemies I created on both sides of the political divide. He actually leaned in while saying that last bit, almost as if to put me off, not knowing the animal nature of the man with whom he was dealing. He wanted to know if I had any idea of the size of the war I was up against. And there I was thinking, if he had any idea of the size of the warrior with whom he was speaking. I wanted to be as smug, as pompous. I wanted to belittle his limited knowledge, but I thought better to lose the battle, to win the eventual, an eventual war, than to let ego and anger have control of the play field. I wanted to tell him that early today I sat in a radio studio to be interviewed and pressed for an hour and a half by the ground, the grassroots, ending with members of the room who started off hostile and unbending, shaking my hand, telling me the mountain was big but if ever there was a man equipped for the fight, it was me. I left that studio shaking hands like friends, new believers, converts, even allies. I wanted to leave that dry cleaner the same. He had his say. My response was, we who are blessed, had a duty to try. That to whom much is given, much is rightfully expected. I wanted to say that like I, I came, I could have spent my life bettering my personal fortune, but my, un my maturing unclenched my political fist. He shook my hand again, saying, we will see. The last statement of the not bested but not victorious. That brief conversation stank to me, worse than trying to convince the uneducated amid the lowest classes, because at least they I could excuse for lack of knowledge. He I expected better of. I want the satisfaction of posting and this recording victory, triumph of good over evil. We're obviously not there yet. But his comments to me, from his comments to me, I got further indication of one thing, that the power structure was aware of me, that they acknowledged me, and that they knew I was coming. And that will have to be enough victory for now. Yeah? Now check some messages. For business. Now start. We had to come. That come in. That, All right. Take care. Take care, my friend. Sorry, Mr. Caller. Feel free to call back. 682 2110.
Housing for all, education and work, healthcare that delivers. Hello, good evening, you're live. Hello, good evening, you're live. Hello. Good evening, you're live. Listen to me on... Hello, you're hearing me? Hello, you're hearing me? Hello, you're hearing me? Good night, you're live. Good evening, sir. This is Mark again. We need to remind everybody that the power is in their hands. Every day. We telling them every day. They learn and they grow. They stepping up. The power in the people's hands. Yep. Have a good night. Thank you, my friend. Power in your hand. Power in your feet. Power in your waist. Stand firm. This this tense with the nonsense. Hello, good evening, you're live. Um, yeah, good evening. I told the wife, I told the wife I have a new name. For His name is LCV. I sure you know what that means, but L- if the viewers don't know, labor, consumption, and vote. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. People know. Get it ready. Talk. We have some talkers in the party. Gabriel, Tony, Felicia, Dilworth, wait. They think there's a one-man party. They push in that nonsense. Wait and see. Rudy Paul. Rudy Paul is part of this organization. You could do better than that. Misty Autumn Day is part of this. Ali G in New York. When Ali G reached down here, it's a campaign election time. They think they're ready. Hello, good evening. You're live. Hello, good evening. You're live. Listen to me on the phone, not on the device. You hearing me? Hi, good evening, Philip. How are you doing? So far, so good. Good night to all the listeners also. I'm calling from New York. New York. We can tell them we can run for elections in New York. <laughs> Thank you. I want to say that there is a um, presidential debate with the two presidents when coming up in um, the election. I would, love, I would love to see a prime minister debate. Thank you. Thank you for that. Hello, good evening. You're you're live? Hello, good night, sir. Good night. Hey, I was, I am the gentleman that sent me a message yesterday about my wife, man. I live in Washington, D.C. And my wife and I, my wife is a U.S. citizen. I was a Trinidad, yeah. And my wife, she goes online and sees all these things posting about this crime, violence, all this stuff. And right now, she doesn't even want to come and visit Trinidad and Tobago. Tell her hope is coming. And uh, I'm trying to convince her. Tell her hope is growing. I promise you, my friend, you don't have to convince her. We will fix it. She will see. She will tell you that place, that's the same place? We want to go there and live because where you calling from? What? Where you calling from? Washington, D.C. Do you know that New York City at one time was the murder capital of the world and in 10 quick years became the number one tourist destination in the world? Wow. And we deal with the people. We know Bill Bratton. I know him personally through Gary Griffith. We know the people to talk to, to come and fix our condition. She will want to come here. Trust me when I tell her that. And this is one-eighth the size of New York City. One-eighth the population. We will fix it. Have some hope. Yeah? My my country too nice for that man. My country too nice for that, buddy. You come home. Yeah? We will fix what? it for you. All yeah? Right, Get sir. in touch with Ali G. See how you could help. We need funding. We need support. Anything that you could do to assist, we're happy to yeah. have you on board. Most definitely. Thank you, my friend.
Gabriel. Philip Edward Alexander. My friend. How are you doing? So far, so good. Well, you know, I'm sharpening up my teeth for the morning. I Six hear a.m. I'm dealing with all the PNMites and the UNCIs. Yes. Who want to call in on Synergy TV. Get them love. Get them love. PNP flag flying high. Orange all the way. The Orange Revolution is here. Stefan was on your life just now. Stefan is, but... <laughs> Stefan is a strong he say, he soul. He said, make a day, man. You go clear the schedule for the whole morning. Stefan, the whole morning. Stefan is a strong soul there for this country. But I tell people that. I say they have one last show on TV that I watch is breaking down. Stefan is a strong soul there for Trinidad and Tobago. You know I tell you? And watch me. Don't respond to hate with hater. Any no, fool could do not. that. Any fool of could do that. Of course not. You had a few sorry for them. Thank you, my brother. Enjoy it tomorrow. Uh, all right. Have a good time. You watch it. Hello, good evening, you're live. Hello? Hi, good evening, you're live. Hi, good evening to all the listeners. This is Janice from Digger Martin. Hi, Janice. Hi. I just want to say to your listeners that it is time for the people of this country to stand up and take a stand. I think we, we need a government that is going to do right by the people. We overdue. The Billions of dollars that have passed through this country, we should be a paradise. Therefore, you have my full support, and I will be coming to one of your meetings for the 12 o'clock at Just, the Stanmo Avenue head office. Janice, right now, when you hang up with me, go on the thread. Find Dami Edwards, Ali G, Dave Lux, Lima McLeod Williamson, Wilkinson, Dilwood Braffett, Felicia Holder, D Diane. Uh, yes, I'm familiar with Felicia. Find any of them and just reach out to them and they will bring you in one time, okay? Thanks All a lot right, for I this. will certainly do that. Thanks for this, Thank love, you. Thanks for this lovely night. call. Bye. Tonight is a whole love off session. If we love this country, if Trinidad and Tobago have to do better, Hello, good evening, you're live. Hello, good evening, Mr. Philip. Hi, good evening. You hearing me? Listen on your phone, not on the device. Yes, yeah, Philip. Listen to me this is on... Kelvin from... This is Kelvin from the Ghani village. Hi, Kelvin. You have to listen to me on your phone, please. Not on wherever you're watching, never delay. You understand what I say? Yeah. Um, you were telling me you're coming to the meeting in Barakpo, but we didn't know which part in Barakpo you're coming to the meeting. The meeting in Barakpo, I will get that information and read it to you right now on air, okay? All right, okay. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. All right, my friend. All right, man. The meeting in Barakpo is Saturday, 29th, July 6th to 9 p.m. is at Louise Auto Supplies and Electronics, 375 Rosha Douglas Road. So it has it is this Saturday in Barakpo at Louis Auto Supplies and Electrics, 375 Rosha Douglas Road. And while I'm saying this, if you have a place and you would like us to come to do a pep cottage meeting or a rally by you, just reach out to the team, send me a message, and I'll put you in touch with the right people. And we're going to do this. We will come right down by you, yeah? The Progressive Empowerment Party, every two weeks until election, we are on a Meet the People tour. We are going to everybody. So the media could do what they like. The media could do what they like. They could play hide and seek for as long as they like. Shelly Das, Samson Nanton, Hema Ramkisun, Fazir Mohammed, Dominic Kalipasad, the rest of the bandit clan in the media, copy and paste media, sell your soul for, for, <laughs> anyway, I mean, tonight is a love off, tonight is not for that, play hide and seek, we're going to the people, we're going home by the people, One people under one flag. Imagine the power of this country when everybody rowing in the same direction. Could you imagine the power of this country to get things done when all of us going in the same direction? 
Yeah, this is real jam. YouTube finish it for me. I type one letter and YouTube finish the name of the song for me. First YouTube I custom to me with this song. If you want to be a part of the constituency executive in your constituency, reach out to Felicia, reach out to Delwood, reach out to Shari Wilson, reach out to the team. You will see them posting on the thread PEP, dummy. Everybody will Dave Lux, Gabriel Osuna. They will put you in touch with each other. Who you need to talk to. Rudy Paul, he like people to harass him. Misty Autumn Day, Lima McLeod. Listen, you'll see them all in the chat. There we go. If it is that who you're voting, there's the other dog. When you're voting, vote them out. Vote them out. If it is the prove it, to be only full of mouths. When you're voting, vote them out. Vote Keep them rolling, tick tock, tick tock. This is the that change must come about. Just as how you vote them in. Vote them out. The Orange Army. Bringing all our people back. They're straining the come and rebuild the anti. This song. This we campaign song. All our foreign base trainees are million strong. They're coming back. They're coming back. Carl had to put on extra flights. They're coming back. And all the PEP members, all they gotta lend people room in all their house. Eh? Lend people room. Our foreign base trainees coming home. And they're coming to help. They're coming to campaign. They're coming to vote. Make sure you get them room in your house. Eh? So we're working together. We're going and build back this country. One people under one flag. All of we, we're going to do this. You know it coming, you're feeling it. If for 30 years, you voting them in. And there's only tears, as soon as they win. Tears in 2015. They give you big words, and enslave your soul. What Rowley and the band of clan do for anybody? Besides Rumperman and Shamfa and Massey Communications and Rohan. Them alone could float in Kabuto. To Ruba and Kuba. Barak Paul, we come in. We're going to tilt the nation to the south this Saturday. Or you come out. Come out in your thousands. Usual suspects, fellas like Jerome Duki. Jerome, we will never forget how so you start from with us from the start. Listen, the PEP members who start this party, you could see all of the people piling on now and they're telling you, we're feeling it, fella, we're feeling it. We know it coming. Listen, when we say housing for all, we're not talking about the madness in the HDC. I shared this tonight and I wanted to tell you all this. I didn't want to close with this, but you need to know this is a nation that has actually legitimized corruption. I will pause the song for a minute. You need to hear this is the actual HDC Act of 2005, Part 2, Section 12. Trinidadians have to understand you actually have two political parties who not only got good at stealing money, they legitimized it, they've written it into law. This is the HDC Act. 
2005. This is the law of the Republic of Trinidad Tobago. This is why I call this country the Royal Imperial Majestic Banana Republic. This is why I tell you you have to give us 41 seats. We have to undo and redo. We have to find things like this. This is what is written into law. The minister may give to the board directions and writing of a specific or general nature to be followed in the performance of its functions or the exercise of its powers under this act with which the board shall comply. Now tell me, if the minister could tell the board what to do, what, pray tell, is the purpose of the board whose job is to provide oversight for the management of the HDC. Isn't that himself to himself? Isn't that the Minister of Housing as Capo, Tito Capo? He directs. He don't even do what Rohan Sanan do, mash up a board to get a new board to create the madness on the port so he could give his partners and them a board contract. He don't even do that. The HDC Act of 2005 writes corruption into law. This is the only nation that the, that the Legislative Review Committee missed that. They miss it. Somebody sat down and said, let me try this. Let's write corruption into law. This is the only country that legitimizes wrongdoing. The HDC Act 2005, Part 2, Section 12. The minister may give to the board directions and writing of a specific or a general nature to be followed in the performance of its functions or the exercise of its powers under this act with which the board shall comply. What then is the purpose of the board of directors of the HDC other than to draw a salary. Friends of the minister, hold a couple thousand a month. Fix up your friends and family with HDC houses and hush. The minister tells HDC what to do. That is madness. That is unforgivable madness. Where's Watson Duke in the PSA? Where's, what's this woman name? Who with them in the parliament now? Jennifer Batiste Primus. All your Playing. Where is Kirk Wait? Kirk Wait and fixing TNT. Kirk, you know about that? But you can't make noise about HDC because I hear again contracts on HDC. I don't know if that is true. Tell the people, Kirk, you as an activist or anyway. Where is where's the MSJ? Where's David Abdullah? David Abdullah, do you know that this is a nation that wrote into law corruption? The Progressive Empowerment Party will abolish. The HDC. We will abolish Unicut. Education facilities management companies, sport TT, we're shutting them all down. We're erasing their existence. We will put in place a proper and robust tenders board. NIPDEC will no longer be able to stray from its remit and give friends of political parties contracts to provide cards and, and security measures. And a madness is gone in this country. The National Insurance Board will never be able to engage in disco financing for friends and family take poor people deductions from their salary and give it up Sarah and Tam Naktai that is thing for people to make jail for jail nobody will make jail in this land what Kurt Allen say the system will always fail as long as the big fish not making jail when Clico was raiding itself when Dupre and Lawrence and, and the whole bandit clan was raiding 25 billion dollars out of Clico the supervisor of insurance was receiving accounts from a company called PricewaterhouseCoopers that were publishing fiction and there was a board called the, the supervisory, the um, oversight, the accounts oversight committee. Ask Faris al Rawi about that committee. Ask Mervyn Assam. That's PNM and UNC. Ask them if that accounts audit committee was signing off on PricewaterhouseCoopers fiction. Ask them. Because all of them, all of them, was supposed to be wearing orange tonight. But the system will always fail. As long as the big fish not making jail. We promise you that a proper housing policy is you don't have to come into the HDC office and take off your clothes. No, sir. All first-time homeowners in this nation who would like to qualify for a loan would get a government-secured loan up to $1.5 million dollars 
zero deposit, zero interest for 30 years. When we say zero, we don't mean point zero 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 one. you know. Kamala Zem say, but you know, Absolute zero deposit, zero interest. You have a job, you qualify. If you fail to make your payments, you will get put out and we will take the house. And I tell you and Tobago this. You see, poor people, poor people is the hardest working people in this country. Everybody who live in large, all them malt and cheeses that selling in this country, cashew nuts and fancy clothes, all that selling off of poor people is poor people working hard and spending their money in this country. And we must give poor people the opportunity to spend our money to own a home. And that is our first policy. We plan to make that they are working on how we do that now. We will make that our first policy. We will sit with the Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago, Royal Bank, RBC, Republic Bank, Scotia Bank, First Citizen Bank, say JMMB. You will accept a government secure a government security as an instrument for home ownership, or we will bring a new bank for homeowners and directly compete with you. Zero interest, provided as a national service. You wouldn't need to spend all our money in security guards. Real talk. Because people with hope and opportunity do not commit crime. Anyway, let's not run longer than the hour we blessed to have. Thank all of you who were with me tonight. Tonight was a real love off session. We really didn't talk much policy and plans. But I wanted to tell people it's not only bad news, you know. The, there is a rainbow in our future. There is bright, bright days to come. This is going to be a nation that people who are not from here will lie and tell people they're from here. This is going to be the country that it was always meant to be. That all the gods had as intention that it should be. We will make sure it is so. One people under one flag. Everybody, every citizen of this republic, stakeholders and shareholders will benefit from the largest of this nation. And who vex loss? Thank you all who was here with us tonight. See you tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.